Hey there, welcome back to my YouTube. Thanks for joining me. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how uh, you can manage your Amazon purchases and make sense of them in Quicken. It's not exactly automated, admittedly, so it's a little bit of manual work. So I have a couple of approaches um, to how you can deal with it. One a little bit more involved than the other, and then you can sort of choose between the two of what works for you. So I'll see you in the video, thanks. I'm Joe DeSanto, by the way. I'm an independent CFO and business consultant. I actually spent most of my career in Los Angeles building a few multi-million dollar businesses, and I've since semi-retired, and now I help other uh, businesses and individuals manage their money and plan better for their future. So if you're interested in small business, personal finance, and real estate advice, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks. All right, folks. So as I mentioned, um, Amazon's a little bit of a thorn in my side, I guess, when it comes to my personal finances and tracking because uh, it's just kind of a manual process, unfortunately. You know, Quicken makes many things about doing your personal finances quicker and easier with its integrations and connections with banks, but there isn't any kind of integration with Amazon. And Amazon is like, you know, we all spend so much money on Amazon now, or at least I do, that it's become its own category of, you know, uh, discussion, I guess, when it comes to managing your personal finances. Quick side note, if you're a business owner and you use Amazon, uh, I'm sorry, you use QuickBooks, QuickBooks actually has an integration uh, with Amazon for Business to actually automate some of what I'm gonna describe here. But anyway, I'm gonna explain to you what I do and uh, you can, you know, take it or leave it or go from there. So first of all, you know, Quicken, I, I do my charges on, my Amazon charges on one credit card. I actually have the Amazon 5% cash back card. I like that card because I get 5% cash back on Amazon and Whole Foods it's, and then 2% cash back on like gas and restaurants, two of my big categories. A restaurant's really the big category. When I uh, download the transactions for that credit card, uh, you know, they come into my register, probably, you know, something you're familiar with at this point. And I'm going to just show you here. I, I have some transactions queued up uh, in my, you know, downloaded transactions holding tank, as I call it. And I'm just going to point out here that if I click on the Amazon transaction, you're going to see that it does, it's categorizes to nothing. It's uncategorized. And I that's on purpose. Um, I guess I'll give a quick overview. What I do is I have my Amazon transactions come in and remain uncategorized. And I'm going to show you why in a sec. There's two possible approaches, I think, to dealing with Amazon, or at least that I recommend to uh, you know clients and people I talk to. You either let them be uncategorized temporarily until you get around to deciding you know how you're going to categorize them, or you put them in a category. I, I create a category for some people called Amazon, Walmart, and Target because these are three stores where you can go buy everything from groceries to clothes to whatever. Um, I guess I didn't qualify that. The reason partly Amazon is its own category is that one, we all buy a lot of stuff from there, but primary, but two, and the primary reason is you can buy anything from there. So if you just categorize everything to Amazon, you don't really have a breakdown of where you spent your money. In my case, that could be groceries, that could be pharm pharmacy, that could be clothes, that could be toys, that could be anything. And I leave them as uncategorized because I have a little system that makes it a little easier to deal with them, which I'm going to show you. Now, the other option is to actually make a category, you know, called Amazon, Target, you know, Walmart, and put all of your Amazon and Target and, and Walmart if it's if it's helpful in that category to either be dealt with them further broken down later when you when you want or to just not break them down you know some people say hey i spent ten thousand dollars in amazon last year i know it could be on a variety of things but i don't want to take the time to go in and break it down further i'm just fine with hey knowing that money went to amazon and and thinking well Maybe a third of that was groceries, third something else, who knows. Uh, but I'm gonna go through my method. So back to this register here. Um, so 
Otherwise, even though Amazon goes in as I can categorize, because of my memorized transactions, you know, if I click on Nature's Food Patch, which is a local grocery store, it's going to come in. If I accept it, it's going to come in as grocery. Um, vehicle tag renewal. Oh, that's me renewing my car. That's not auto categorized. But the thing is, Amazon, actually, I have a memorized transaction for Amazon and AMZN and all that other stuff. And the memorized transaction is to keep it uncategorized. That's what I want to happen in this register. OK, so if I were to accept in all of these transactions, OK, what's going to happen is some of them are going to end up being auto categorized ones that I have rules for. And anything that's Amazon is actually going to come in and be uncategorized. Now, truth be told, a few of these other transactions may come in and be uncategorized as well. Like, for example, this, you know, vehicle tag, it doesn't know what to do with that. So uh, insurance and reg, that's why I would put that under. Um, but if I were to accept all these in here, like I said, you know, some would be categorized, some would be uncategorized, and the Amazon transactions would definitely be uncategorized. Now, I'm not going to bring them all in because that's going to make this video a little longer. But for things that end up in my register that are uncategorized, I can filter for that up here. So if I go here and I put a filter on just for uncategorized stuff, what I get here is a list of uh, stuff that's uncategorized. And as you can see, it's only Amazon here. And that's because what I do is I'll accept all the transactions in. Uh, many of them will auto categorize. Whatever that wasn't auto categorized uh, besides Amazon, I'll go in and put a category on. Usually that's just, you know, a handful of things uh, in each download. And then I will leave my Amazon charges uncategorized. And I want that so that I can so I can do this filter and dwindle down what's in this register to be Amazon. And then, as you could uh, maybe guess, I go over to Amazon in my orders and I try to match up the amounts. Um, so, for example, uh, and by the way, like, you know, I'm not going to show you how to go into the orders. You can figure that out. I, I kind of teed this up so that you would only see a few of my charges so you don't see all my personal uh, purchases on Amazon. But this view here will show a few things just for the example. So, for example, I got this charge here of 111.18, and over here I see 111.18 is groceries. So I categorize that one to groceries. Moving on down the line here, uh, now this one is zero, so I'm going to talk about that actually after. This is related to a gift card setup, so um, I'm going to explain that. It's another issue and sort of thing about um, Amazon. Uh, but down here, we'll go down, we see 1540. I look at my list and I see 1540. So this is health expenses, uh, I, I, I kind of been segregating health expenses between me and my wife and my son because I have this project for 2025 of trying to figure out a more financially efficient way to do health insurance. So anyway, but um, I now, so because of that, uh, what I just mentioned, I've been also tagging my health expenses so that I can have a good understanding of where I spend money and how I might do insurance better. But anyway, but then, you know, in this case, because it's uh, some of the things for Amazon, I want to actually know what I bought and partly because of my little project here. So I even put nasal strips there, breathe right strips, right? Then I hit enter. And as I hit enter and that, that I add that category because I'm filtering for uncategorized, it disappears. Now, if I were to go go back to all transactions here, of course, it would be in there. Um, I'll just do that real quick. You know, you, now you see everything go down. It's going to be in there somewhere. And then I go back to uncategorized. So what I end up with at the end of each download, which I like I, I often say I do every couple of weeks, you know, I'll have probably five to ten Amazon transactions that end up in my register uncategorized. And then I go over to my Amazon, I go to my order history, I find them and I categorize them correctly and label them. That's what I think 
that is worth me doing partly because I, I really just want to know where I spend my money. That's important to me. Um, but also Amazon is, you know, can almost be an addiction. You know what I mean? It, it's so easy to buy stuff there. I think it's a healthy thing to go look at your Amazon charges and see what your spending habit is there and decide like, hey, am I like abusing Amazon and spending too much money? You know, you know should I be more thoughtful about, you know, uh, what I spend on Amazon? Now, uh, back to my other thing. Uh, idea of just categorizing stuff as Amazon, Walmart, Target, and then either leaving it just as that and, you know, in in your, um, here, I'll, I'll do that. I'll do an example of that here. Say I uh, do this. I, I have that category in here for, uh, for the sake of this video. If I hit enter and then I go over to my report here, I'm going to see that, you know, there's a charge in this category. Now, again, you could do what I'm doing here, put everything in there and come back to it later or not and just see it as, you know, a sum total. Now, really quick on the Walmart and Amazon, I add those into this category because oftentimes, again, Walmart and Target, you can buy anything at. However, in my case, I don't really buy much at Walmart. I buy mostly groceries there. That's the other place we buy groceries. And honestly, it's, you know, way cheaper than Whole Foods. So we try to only buy at Whole Foods, you know, things we can't get at uh, Walmart. And Target, honestly, I don't really shop that much at, to be honest with you. So in my case, you know, this would be mostly Amazon because Walmart would come through and it generally auto categorizes to groceries, right? Um, but anyway, I just wanted to illustrate, you know, what you would have in your report if you start putting stuff in this kind of catch-all category. But if you do that, you can't, filter just for that catch-all category if you later want to go um you know change them change each purchase to be whatever category it should be you though could um use uh find and replace and go look up the amazon category and change things later that way if you wanted but i like this method i i found it it's kind of the easiest um so in any case uh let's see Sorry, this is like sticking up here. That's pretty much what I'm doing for on the Amazon. But I also want to talk about the Amazon gift card situation. So a lot of people get Amazon gift cards um, for the holidays or whatever we do. Uh, or you might get a refund on an Amazon gift card or who knows. But, but Amazon gift cards seem to pop up a lot <laughs> for me. And what happens when you go buy something from Amazon and you use the gift card, it shows up as a $0 purchase because if you were to go over to your gift card balance, the purchase would be logged here. So if I go to the gift card balance and look at the detail and I click on uh, a certain charge, it brings up the charge uh, and shows you the amount that got paid for on the gift card. Now you might say, hey, I don't want to categorize, spend the time on that. And you could just, when you get a gift card, uh, spend the money on it and just kind of look at it as like, hey, I didn't record that gift card as any kind of income or gift, and I'm not going to record the expense. And it's a small amount on a given you know, annual basis. So I'm just going to like not even pay attention to it. Um, but if you, like for me, actually, truth be told, I was <laughs> getting a lot of gift cards for a reason and I it was it was a good amount of money so I wanted to track it so I kind of learned a little bit about how things work with the gift card so I decided to set up a gift card account and I would put in say like you know if I got it when I got the gift card I was actually getting some referral fees as Amazon gift cards um, so I would put income in this gift card thing say a hundred dollars and now I would have a balance in here. And so what I would do is if I spent money and I saw that it was a zero dollar purchase, you know, in my cart, I'd go, oh, that was a gift card thing. Let me go over to the gift card and I'll log that. I'll, I'll look at what I bought and I'll kind of connect the dots between the gift card and the purchase. And in this case, it turned out to be the Hydro Flask here. I can't believe we spent $41 on a water bottle. That's disturbing. <laughs> um, 
I'll put in Amazon charge, uh, 41.18. Ah. And I don't know, let's call that like a household purchase and I'll put water bottle. Um, so you might be like, wow, that's crazy, Joe. That's just not worth the time and effort. And I wouldn't disagree with you if like you get an Amazon gift card here or there, like just uh, maybe use it and just don't even worry about it. Just be like, hey, I, was, I got a gift. I bought something. I don't need to worry about 50 bucks or 100 bucks. Just not worth the hassle. In my case, because I was actually, I'd received quite a bit of money in form of the Amazon gift card it actually was meaningful me, for me to take that step and do that. But again, I will admit that it's a fair amount of work to like do this manual kind of review of your Amazon charges and connect the dots and quicken and categorize everything and you know put notes. Um, I definitely uh, have worked with some people like, I just don't wanna do that. And they're like, I'm just gonna put the stuff in the Amazon category and know that, hey, I spend money on Amazon, maybe I should spend more or less, or if I'm curious, I'll go look at what I spent money on. The other reason though, that sometimes it is valuable to do this, and at the end of the year for all my clients who have businesses, they buy business stuff for the business on Amazon, and it potentially is a deductible charge. So if you don't do this, I always recommend to anyone that has businesses, hey, like take a little peek through your Amazon charges and see if there's something in there that you bought for your business that would be a business deduction that you're otherwise going to forget about. So maybe if you have a business and you use your Amazon personal account to buy stuff for your business, uh, you might want to pay a little bit more attention to it. Or maybe when you make that purchase, you kind of make a mental note and you're like, hey, I'm just most of my Amazon goes to that one category, but I bought this, you know, I don't know, computer or some something. And I'm just gonna like look for that charge as it comes through my credit card and, and categorize that to business so I don't forget about it. So anyway, uh, definitely an area, a, a bit of an area of hassle with personal finance dealing with Amazon, but it is what it is. And uh, that is a potential way you can address it. All right, talk to you in the next video, bye.